All right, good morning. Uh, just a quick little video on uh, as I'm feeding hay. It's a beautiful morning, so I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, pasture preparedness and also dealing with your paddocks going from a transition of spring and summer grass to fall and winter grass. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about just a small video of how to transition your paddocks from spring summer to fall winter. Um, we have eight paddocks here um, and that's not counting some other areas that we could take in with different refencing um, but we do work with basically those eight paddocks uh, and that's sufficient for our five cows that we have here on the homestead. Now when we start the sheep rotation and then when two of our uh, three of our cows are pregnant their mama cows, so when they start calving, we will take in more paddocks. But as of right now, we don't want to utilize any extra space that we don't have to. So, let's talk about transitioning. Our eight paddocks are pretty much all summer paddocks. They all have Bermuda or Bahia grass growing, which is our spring and summer grass. Now, they have some weeds too, but that's, for the most part, are, are one of those two grasses. Now, uh, as you see, we have hay that's already kind of getting ready for the fall and winter time. We're going to take four to five paddocks, depending on which paddocks we choose, which sizes that we choose, and we will make those winter paddocks. So what we'll do is go ahead and plant uh, some rye grass as the main grass in, that, in those paddocks. However, we do do a little wildlife mix that we also love deer hunting, so we'll also throw some of that in there, which will tend to have a few more things such as uh, wheat and barley and things like that that tend to grow good here during the winter. So. Uh, it has some chicory and all that in it. So, but mainly it's rye grass. Now, remember, when you dig up or when you when you till in or disc in your bahia, bahia tends to not grow as well once you disc it in, especially when you grow uh, rye on top of it. So, spring grass for next year, you need to make sure you're planting and make sure you understand that if you tore if you tore up all your ground and made rye grass paddocks out of it, then your spring and summer will be struggling spring and summer unless you have tons of grass or in tons unless you ton the seed or rain or, and things like that so we don't want to tear up all our paddocks we want to tear up about five paddocks so why do we grow ryegrass in those paddocks and not the others um, every year is different next year we may grow in the different paddocks and let those rest to summer grass and then go from winter I tend to like ryegrass plots growing when those grasses tend to do great for spring, then they'll do great for winter. Now next year it might be a totally different rotation. Um, those are, these tend to be a little bit more wet paddocks with less trees. So these tend to be the best paddocks for our winter because our winter doesn't get real cold, but then we don't have the heat of the sun bearing down on our cow. So where those might have a lot more trees, they may not grow the best quality grass always because of all the trees taking up some of the nutri nutrients. So, these here being wide open pastures may be the best result for, or get the best results for winter grass. So we're gonna grow those this year, mostly in the winter grass, and keep these over here next to the uh, dairy stanchion for summer grass and feeding hay. So the reason we start feeding hay so soon, first of all, right now you still can get it a pretty good deal around here because people, um, even though it's been dry like crazy, We've not needed a lot because we've done great paddock rotation. We still have fresh, lush green grass in a lot of areas here and over here. Hadn't even been touched in about two weeks. So they have great grass that's still growing. But the reason we're slowing them down and not putting right on this grass is because they're eating good hay, good quality hay that was just cut this week. It's not been rained on. But then also it helps me grow these thicker and more lush to keep them on it for a little bit longer as our rye grass paddocks start to grow. So when we go to HOA, they'll most likely be in these two permanent fence paddocks where which keeps them safe. I don't have to worry about them as much because it's barbed wire versus temporary fencing. And then also they all have fresh lush grass for that five to seven days that we're gone. So everything we do is, is prepping and planning and making sure we're making sense uh, for our rotational plan. Now your rotational plan not, might not look like that, but remember, few things, key things to think about. If I plant rye grass or winter grass here, is it gonna hurt my spring flow for next year? Is it gonna, you know, hurt the quality and the minerals that will be brought out of that grass? And can I afford to reseed if I needed to? 
or can I afford to not have that paddock in the early stages of rotation for spring? That's one of the questions you need to ask. Also, when I do this rotation, does it seem like it makes more sense to have half our paddocks in ryegrass or can I supplement more hay? Am I providing my own hay or am I having to pay high prices for hay? So to me, what you're paying for hay and getting good quality hay will help you decide probably how many winter paddocks you grow. Um, last year, because I didn't have access to really good hay, I planted about six paddocks. I uh, really, it was all the six paddocks I had. I didn't have the other open, but I knew that the temporary fencing would open up to summer grass that we had not been on from the year prior. So I planted every one that was in rotation last year in ryegrass, knowing that I was making two or three more paddocks. So if you're making new paddocks and they're not made yet, plant everything in rye because it won't matter. Because again, you will have fresh grass for them not that they've not been on to go on. And you can look, go back and look at those videos where we made those paddocks and you can see the lush, fresh spring grass that we had at that time. So it all comes down to, you know, your situation at your, your farm. Make sure you're planning well, make sure you know where they're at and why you want them there for the longer time, why the summer grass is stagnating, why the winter grass is coming up. Make sure you're supplementing some good quality hay or feed while you're doing that or you're keeping them in a paddock that's lush for a time being so that way you're helping grow the new paddocks as they come up. So hope you enjoyed this little video. It's just a small little video talking about paddock rotations and the transition uh, from each grass to a new season. But also remember you have to go back to your spring and summer grass without hurting it for fall. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about paddock rotation, please let us know. That's one of our favorite things to talk about is our cattle and how we're rotating. So uh, God bless you. Happy home